To perform real-time PCR, start with a basic PCR mix. Then we add fluorescent levels to the PCR mix. A light source in the real-time PCR instrument excites the fluorescence and the camera captures the fluorescent signals. As amplification proceeds, the fluorescence accumulation is captured by the instrument after every cycle and it is translated into a real-time PCR graph. With real-time PCR, there are three amplification stages. The first stage is known as exponential, the second is linear, and the third is plateau. In the exponential phase, the reagents are in abundance and the PCR product doubles every cycle. In the linear phase, the reagents begin to run out and the PCR reaction slows down. In the plateau phase, the reagents are depleted and the PCR reaction stops. Real-time PCR focuses on the exponential phase because it provides most precise and accurate data for quantitation. Within the exponential phase, two values are calculated. The threshold line is the level of detection or the point at which a reaction reaches a fluorescent intensity above the background level. The PCR cycle at which the sample reaches this level is called the cycle threshold or CT. The CT value is used to downstream quantification of the presence or absence. Real-time PCR has several advantages over the regular PCR. It is more insensitive. That means it can give you a better result. It is more quantitative. It can give you a better amplification data and easy to measure. This is faster. No gel need to be prepared. It is safer because you don't have to use carcinogenic materials in it. The real-time PCR systems from different applied biosystems use two main fluorescence detection. Cybergreen is the first one. Cybergreen fluorescence format uses a dye called Cybergreen which binds to non-specifically to double-stranded DNA. The DNA dye complex emits green light which is recorded by the real-time PCR instrument. For cybergreen detection, it is important to run a melting curve analysis following a real-time PCR to ensure that the desired amplicon was detected and the infection point on the curve indicates the melting point of the amplicon. Note that contaminating DNA or primer dimers would show up as an additional peaks separate from the desired amplicon peak. Second type is using Tacman probes. The Tacman probe fluorescence format uses two primers, a probe with fluorescent reported dye and a quencher, and a target DNA and polymerase. The design of this probe is very important. The Tacman probe is an oligonucleotide that contains fluorescent reported bind 5' prime end and the quencher bind at the 3' prime end. After the separation, the probe is designed to bind to the target's DNA sequence. While the DNA, the dye quencher are in intact, there is no fluorescence. But when polymerase elongates, it is able to cleave the probe, start and separate the reporter from its quencher, thus giving the fluorescence, which can be captured as a signal by the real-time PCR machine. All real-time PCR formats detect fluorescence in the real-time and uses the CT value to perform quantitative and presence or absence of amplicon detection and it is known as quantitative real-time PCR.